Hey, right now I'm gonna teach you how to master the art of selling. Hey, it's Ted McGrath and I'm going to jump in and teach you how to master the art of selling. And I've got this free gift for you right here on how to master the art of selling. So grab it right now and I'm gonna jump into the five principles to master the art of selling that I've learned over the last 20 years in sales. You're gonna love this, it's gonna be simple, it's gonna be easily implementable, and you're gonna get into action right away as you're watching this video. So what's the thing with sales? Why do most people hate sales? Why do most people not like salesmen? Why do most people think that, ah, sales is kind of an icky thing? And why do most people, when they're selling, feel uncomfortable? I'm gonna solve all those problems for you right now here in this video. So the first thing I wanna to talk to you about about selling is focusing on the customer and not on yourself. And the first principle is, What's the customer's number one goal? You see, most people get into selling and they walk in and they throw up all over somebody. They just sell, 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 and they go too fast and they say too much and they confuse the customer. Why not just talk to the customer about what's relevant to them? How would you ever know what's relevant to the customer unless you ask them a very simple question, such as, what is your number one goal as it relates to this product? Or if you're selling something that has to do with, say, financial advice. You know, Mr. Client, I know that you wanna invest in some financial products, you wanna get a great rate of return. What's your most important goal that you'd like to accomplish in the next year or three years? And you listen. If you're selling somebody a house, you might say something like, what is the most important thing to you about buying a house? And they're going to tell you. So rather than you throw darts all over the place and miss the bullseye, what if you could hit the bullseye right out of the gate? See, the first thing I learned when I was 21 years old was how to ask questions. Every Monday morning I would walk in and I would say to my boss, I would say, I need more product knowledge, I need more product knowledge. He says, no, you need more knowledge of the customer. You need to learn how to ask questions. Sit your butt in that chair and ask these 12 questions. And we'd ask these questions over and over and over and over again and we'd drill it 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 until we were so sick of asking questions that we got good at asking questions. Because it's an art to ask questions and find out what is most important to your customer. Here's one of the most valuable things you can do with sales. If you know what's most important to your customer, let me give you an example. I'm sitting down in front of somebody and I go, so you know, what is important about buying this financial product to you, for you today? And they say, well, what's important to me is really that I'd like to have security for my family. And if you had security for your family, what would you feel? I would feel freedom. And if you had freedom, what would you get then? Well, I would have the ability to go do what I want when I want. And what would you do? Well, I would go follow my dreams. So really today, this is about you following your dreams. Is that true? Well, yeah, dreams, security, all these things. So really, what's the most important thing for you, Mr. Customer? I, wa I wanna go after my dream, and I wish I had the money to do it. Boom, bullseye. Question, you see? Most of the time, the first answer people give you is not really the exact answer. It's not the most full potential version of the answer. So if you continue to ask questions to up-level somebody's conversation with you, they will begin to tell you the truth of what they really want. When you get to the truth, you will make the sale all the time. Most people never get to the truth because they never ask questions and they never know what's most important to their clients. So they just try and sell this pen or they just try and sell this product or they just try and sell this house or they try and sell this car and they have no idea what the customer's thinking. Which leads me to point number two, objections. You ever get on the phone with somebody and you're talking to them and you're like, well, I have to think about it. So what do you need to think about? What a great question back. I mean, you hear that all the time. I need to think about this thing. Well, that's the exact reason why I wanted to have this phone call with you or have this meeting with you because I'd like to know what you have to think about. What is, it, what is it you want to think about? Let's think about it together. I'm telling you, that is one of the greatest, greatest questions you can ask in sales because most of the time, people are thinking about something. And they're gonna tell you I have to think about it, but they're really thinking something already and they're not telling you what they're thinking. So if you just go, so, oh great, you have to think about it. What do you need to think about it? They'll tell you. Now at the first prod, you might go, well, what do you have to think about? Oh, I just need to take some time because I, I really need to think about it. So great, that's why I scheduled this phone call with you. So you could tell me what you have to think about or what you're thinking right now and we can think about it together because the reality is, Mr. Klein, if I let you off this phone, if you leave this meeting right now, you'll go back to your life, you'll likely get busy and at the end of the day, you won't make a decision because you're so busy with all the other things and you won't be focused on this product, which I know you want because you said it's most important to you to have your dream or have X or have Y or have Z or whatever the client said. Does it make sense? 
So diffusing objections is simple because you just ask a question to get to the real thing that the client's thinking and when they tell you what they're thinking and it's the real thing that they're thinking, it's easy to overcome. Make sense? And it's not even overcoming, it's just diffusing it. A question diffuses an objection. Are you starting to pick up on the trend? The mastering, the art of selling is really about asking the right questions at the right moment. Another client comes and says, Ted, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I got to think about it. Or they say, you know, it, it, the, the money thing, it's a little bit expensive. It's like, you know, $5,000, like it's expensive. Great. So let's talk about your money situation. They go, what? Go, yeah, let's talk about your money situation. It was expensive. Why don't you tell me what situation you're in right now so together we can create a solution and figure out how you can invest in this thing because you said that it was your most important goal and you said that this is why you wanted to do this thing. So do you still want to do it? And they go, yeah, so let's figure out a way to do it. Tell me about your financial situation. What a great question, right? I've trained my salespeople on this. You should see me on calls when I go into it and I got on the phone with the client and I'm like, okay, great, so tell me about your financial situation. They're like, oh yeah, I just don't know that I have the money. I said, what kind of money do you have? And they go, well, I got some money in savings and checkings. And they're like, well, how much money do you have in savings? And all of a sudden they go, well, you know, I've got some. I go, what sum? And they go, I've got $20,000. I'm like, great. If you continue to ask the question in the right way, you will get the answer. Great, so what do you have on credit cards? I got $15,000 available on credit, boom. The once they start trusting in you with one answer, they're gonna give you the next and 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 you're gonna know everything about their situation and they're gonna be able to make the decision because it's not that they don't have the money, it's they're not willing to part with the money and that's what you haven't figured out yet. That's what most salespeople haven't figured out. Most people have the money. They're just not willing to part with the money. You haven't given them a reason enough to part with it. Now, if you're a salesperson who walks in and just go buy this, and this is why it's so great, and this pen's so great, and you should buy this pen, well, you don't even know what's important to them. So it's likely you're not gonna get the sale. And because you're not asking questions, you're not even know what their money situation is. So if you don't know what their money situation is, and if you don't know what's important to them, how do you ever sell? It's kind of hard, right? Those are the things you need to know. Time, okay? See, all of this is um, bridging off the first thing that I talked about, point number one, which is know what's important to them. So the client goes, well, I, you know, I don't really know that I have the time for this right now. I'm like, great, but you told me this is important to you, right? So dare I ask what else is above this thing that you said is important? Like, this is important. How do you not make time for what's important to you? So what, so like you said it's important, right? Yeah, it's important. So shouldn't you make time for the things that are important for you in your life? They go, yeah. I mean, what's somebody gonna say to you if they told you this is important and they said this is one of their goals, their primary goals, and then they don't have the time for it. You don't have time for your most important goal or something that's really important to you? Come on. What's the real issue that's going on besides the time thing right now? And that's a great follow-up question to ask a client. It's time. Well, you said this is important to you, right? Yeah, so it is important. So what's really underneath all this that Maybe you, you don't want a voice right now and you don't feel comfortable, but you can, you can trust me, right? Which leads us into the third point is story, right? The way you get somebody to trust you, if somebody is not confiding in you in a conversation, you tell them a story. So when I'm selling stuff to entrepreneurs about how to grow their business and how to market and how to sell and how to do all those things, when I'm sitting there with an entrepreneur, one of the first things I do in the beginning of the sales conversation is I get to know them, I ask them about their goals, and I wait for the time to pivot and then I insert my story. So the client might say something like, you know, I, I've been in corporate America for a while and you know, I've been wanting to do this entrepreneurial thing and I'm doing it part time now. I go, I totally understand, totally get it. I was in corporate America, 21 years old, I was in the insurance business. And uh, you know, I had this goal to make six figures and I accomplished it because I thought life was about money and I did and then that night I overdosed from drugs and alcohol and I almost died. I was like, wow, there's gotta be more to life than this. So I put my head down and I was like, I'll make partner with this company. I went out and I just, six years, I worked, worked to the bone and I was one of the top partners in the company and I was left with that question, is this all there is to my life? So I was like, I know what I'll do, I'll become an entrepreneur. I went out and become an entrepreneur. I started a business I wasn't even passionate about and then within you know, nine months or a year or so, I was on my couch, my face in my hands. I'm like, what the hell am I gonna do with my life, man? I'm broke. My car's getting towed out of the driveway. I can't even afford my motorcycle payment anymore. My house is in foreclosure. Like, what do I really wanna do now? What do I really want to do? So I'm going to ask you right now, Mr. Client, what do you really want to do with your life? What's most important to you? Notice how I just weaved in the story. He's telling me about his life, about corporate America, and then I just tell my story. Now there's relatability, there's trust. I've been on the journey, he understands me. We, can, we connect, we have affinity for each other, right? There's a connection, we're like each other. All of a sudden he's confiding in me or she's confiding in me, it's like, okay, they're now going to tell me anything I ask. 
And then when they don't tell me, I say, hey, listen, you know, level with me. I told you about overdosing from drugs and alcohol. It's kind of a personal thing. Like I told you how I went broke. Like you can trust me. Tell me what's on your mind. Boom, done. I've never been on the phone where I've asked a question somebody hasn't told me. Never. To this day. To this day. They don't answer my question, I ask it again. They don't answer it again, I ask it again in a different way until I get the answer. Because people trust me on the phone. They trust me in the conversation. The other piece that I want to share with you, which is the fourth piece, I think we're on the fourth bullet point right now, is value. When you're meeting with somebody, you want to add value in that conversation. Now, it depends what you're selling, right? It depends what you're selling, but even if you're selling houses, you've got to find a way to go above and beyond to add value to that person. If I'm doing a consultation with somebody because we're selling coaching a lot or we're selling marketing services or we're selling you know, whatever we're selling at the time, we add value by giving them free consultations first to add value to show them the opportunity, to show them that they, can, they have a breakthrough in that moment on the phone with us and they're like, wow, this person's adding value to my life. So when you add value before you ask for the check, people will write the check faster. All great salespeople know this, right? Most of the other people look at it, they're like, it's work, I'm putting in my time, I'm putting in my time, it's so much work to do, so much work to, it's really great salespeople are like, I'll put in the time because I know I'm great and at the end of the day, you're gonna write me a bigger check. This is how it goes, right? You do great and you over deliver, people are gonna write checks. So value and adding value to the customer is hugely, hugely important in the game of sales. Now another technique that you use sales to really master the art of it Let's say you go to a client and you're talking to the client and you're like, hey, Mr. Client, so you told me your number one goal is this, right? And they go, yeah, right? And you told me it's important to you because you want to go out and you want to live your dreams or you want to do X, Y, Z. And they're like, yeah, it's, it's what's important to me. So I'm about to get into talking to you about the investment in this program or in this service or in this product. But before I get there, like, I want to talk to you about just like how committed you feel like you are on a scale of one to 10 in going out and accomplishing your number one goal. So notice how I don't put it on the product. I don't say, how committed are you on a scale of one to 10 to go buying this house? How committed are you scale one to 10 to buy this pen? How committed are you scale one to 10 to you know, get your health better? How committed are you scale one to, I'm not talking about the product. I'm linking their commitment level to their most important goal. In the beginning of the conversation, they told me what was important to them. So when it comes before I make the sale, I want to get the commitment level. So on a scale of one to 10, where are you? You know, in your commitment to accomplish this goal, I'm a nine. Okay, great. So um, on a scale of one to 10, you're a nine, great. So I get that some people, they never believe they're at a 10. Like I'm kind of like that. Like there could always be more. So, so my, my level of like, I, I don't really hit tens, right? Cause like to me, 10 is like the peak and I'm always going for more than the peak, right? So it, is nine the peak for you? Like where your commitment is all in at a level nine? They're like, well, no, no. For me, it's like I'm not, not really all in on it. So great, so what's stopping you from being at a level 10? What's stopping you from being fully committed from this thing that you want? Like what would be in the way? Before we even get into this discussion, they're gonna start telling you their objections before you even get, ever get into the price. So now you're flushing out objections before you get to the investment. Go, and then they say, well, you know, I'm not really sure that uh, this is the right fit for me. And notice the questioning. Great, so what would make you think it's not the right fit? Well, I'm just not really sure because I've never done this before. Great, so since you've never done this before, what would make you feel comfortable with actually doing this? Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not really sure that like, I understand fully. Oh, great, what do you need to understand more of so you can make a decision so you feel comfortable about it? Well, I'd just like to know a little bit more about point number three that you talked about on XYZ. Oh, great, so what would you like to know about point number three? So all I'm doing, right, before I get to the sale is asking questions and I'm taking what they give me and I'm feeding it back. I'm taking them what they give me and I'm feeding back in a question to lead them closer and closer to the water to take a sip. That's all I'm doing. I'm listening and I'm asking a question based on what they originated. So what happens is the more I listen, they originate an idea or they originate a question, I just track it. I track it, it's like footsteps in the snow. I track the first step, the second step, the next step. Before I know, I'm, uh, they're leading me. I've reversed the rule. They're now leading me exactly how they're gonna make a buying decision. That's it, I just follow the footsteps. They're like, Ted, come on into my house. I'm opening the doors to me. Just, I'm just following their steps right to the doors to their house. They open the doors to the house, the sale's made, it's done. That's sales. That's the art of selling. It's that simple. The sale is made before the sale. Most people think, I'm getting to the check right now. I gotta ask for the money. 
That's not where the sales made. Sales made before that with what's important to the client. The sales made before that with when the client telling you that they're committed. Once you have what's important to them, once you have their commitment level, and then you get to the sale and you say the investment is this, and they go, uh, yeah, I, I just don't know that I can do it. Oh, okay, great. So let me just make sure that we're on the same page with this. In our conversation already, you were just talking about how your commitment level is at a 10, right? So did something change between now and the conversation about money? Well, no, I just don't think I have the money. Well, do you think at a level 10 commitment we should be resourceful to find the money? It would make sense, right? I don't just have the time. Well, do you, you know, if you, you don't have the time on this thing, but you just mentioned that it's important to you, right? Do you think we should find the time and figure out a way together to make the time so you can go do this thing? Yeah. So anywhere they go, the only objection they're ever giving is they're objecting to themselves. They're never objecting to the sale, right? They're objecting to the price. They're not objecting to the price. What they're basically saying is my goals are not worth it. That's what they're saying. So we bring it back to them of why they wouldn't invest $2,000 or $5,000 or $100,000 into what's important to them. Why? So then you just handle that situation. You, you handle, you handle, you handle. So by the end of the conversation, like it's kind of like you're in a garage and all of a sudden you start in the garage and you start painting, right? And then you paint yourself into a corner. Like literally, the client can throw out objections, ideas on it. You're painting, painting, painting. Before you know, the client's up against the wall. There's nowhere for them to step and they step there on dirty paint. They want to be in the clean paint. The clean paint is their dream, it's their goals, their vision, it's what they want. So they just stay there. They're like, yes, you got me. That's it. Yes, you're right, 100%. Here's the truth. The, the part that's not painted yet, so they're in the garage, they're like, there, that's the truth. It's right, staring them right there, boom. Truth hits them. They're like, yes, I'm in, boom, check, done. That's sales. So if you want to master the art of selling, follow the principles that I just shared. It works. This is like, this is like 20 years of really good stuff that I just gave you on this. And at the same time, the gift. It's got even more good stuff in it right now, all right? How to master the art of selling. It's right here. Grab the gift right now. I know you're going to love it. Subscribe to my channel because there's more great videos like this and you're going to dig it. And comment down below. Ask a question if you have something question about sales. I'm training you to ask questions right now so you should go ask a question, right? Because that's how you get good at sales. So ask a question and like this thing. If you feel like I gave you value today and you feel like you can use some of the stuff that I gave to you, then give me some value back. Like my channel because I want to get my message out to the world and help create real salespeople who actually do right by their customers, ask the right questions, and are focused on the dreams of what their customers want in service and inspiring people to take action. I know that's you, so I'll see you soon in the next video.